Well, I'm delighted today to be speaking to Andrew Prince from Charles Monap here in Dubai. Welcome, Andrew. Thank you, David. A pleasure to be here. So terrific to see you today. Um, before we get into our conversation, it'd be interesting to hear a little bit more about Charles Monat as a company and your role in the firm. Of course. Well, I, Charles Monat is 50 years old. We were formed in 1971. And coincidentally, we're in the United Arab Emirates, who are also formed in 1971. So there's a bit of a correlation there. And our global presence is such that we cover Asia, the Middle East, Africa, and the Americas. Fantastic. So today we want to talk about a little bit about the tools that are available in the insurance world for a variety of scenarios. Mm -hmm. um, but perhaps you could just kick off by talking us through some of the products that are available that you use with high net worth clients. Sure, sure. Well, personally, I have three decades of experience of dealing with the, the wealthy individuals with their legacy and succession planning. And some of the tools that are available in the armory are things like universal life, whole of life, term assurance, interestingly, private placement life insurance, and more traditional savings plans. Do you find that these terms are, are well understood by even the professionals that are around the private clients that, that they're advising? Is there an education piece to do, do you think, in the sector generally about how these products can be used? Sure. I, I think you hit the nail on the head there that, you know, traditionally there's very much a silo approach where a lawyer knows all about the law and, and an accountant knows all about taxation and the insurance broker, such as myself, knows all about insurance and, and never the twain really meet. Now, part of our remit is actually the educational piece. So as an example, I was with a very big family office recently and had two very senior chartered accountants representing them in our office. And they wanted to find out more about private placement life insurance. And I'd given them each a, an orange and asked them to describe it to me. And they looked at me a little bit perplexed to begin with. And then one of them volunteered and he described it as sort of like a, a tough, tough leathery skin. I said, fantastic. And, and what about inside? He, he said, it, it's inside, it's a fruit. Okay. I said, well, what does the leathery skin do? He said, it protects the fruit. And I said, is that a single piece or, or many pieces? He said, well, it's segments. Mm -hmm. And I said, congratulations, you've just described pl private placement life insurance perfectly because it is a protective wrapper protecting the assets which are segmented inside. So just to come back on, on some of the definitions there of some of the products that you mentioned, it'd be great to just walk through the different uh, types of products that you mentioned earlier. Sure. Well, Term assurance is, does exactly what it says on the tin. Yeah, for a defined period of time, whether that be 10, 20, 30 years, the insured is covered for X number of dollars. Mm. If they miss a premium, policy lapses with zero value, and if it expires, then there's no return of funds. Universal life and whole of life, on the other hand, do have a savings component, which actually underpins the longevity of the contract, and a whole of life and universal life are designed to last for the entirety of the insured's life. Okay, and uh, I mean, insurance is really the original risk transfer tool. How do you see insurance being used with those also in business, the entrepreneur sure. that you might advise? Sure. Well, the, the tools themselves are universally adaptable. So mm -hmm. as an example, I was with a law firm recently, uh, a boutique law firm, limited number of partners. They had a fantastic partnership agreement that said in the event of one partner dying, the others would buy the other's share. And I said, well, how are you going to pay for that? And you could see the look of, ex of expression on their face going, ah, we hadn't thought of that. Mm. Yeah. So the life insurance side of things provides the liquidity for the deceased spouse to receive cash and the surviving partners to continue with the business unencumbered. And what, what about the age profile of clients you're working with? Uh, why is it important to look at this earlier on rather than than, than leaving it too late, as it were. Sure. sure. Um, well, as a 50-something-year-old with bits falling off, I can testify <laughs> that the younger you are, generally speaking, the, the healthier you are. Mm. And as a direct consequence, the, the premium is going to be correspondingly lower. Mm. Um, but I jest. What we've seen is a, is a trend whereby 
traditionally clients would have started to look in their late 50s, early 60s. We're now finding that's more like 40s and late 30s. In fact, I was in the region recently and there are three clients all in their 30s who are now insuring their spouses who are also in their 30s. Mm. Yeah. So there's lots of different reasons why they might do that. Primarily family protection in their case, mm. IHT planning, okay, but also for th philanthropic purposes. Mm. And, and what, are, what are the practical, what's the practical side of putting in place some new life cover? I mean, in terms of medicals or what, what, what might a, a procedure look like in order to, to put some new cover in place? Sure, and that's interesting because COVID, if, if we go back pre-COVID, which wasn't that long ago, 2019, 2020, it was a, um, almost an archaic process, very manual, laborious, whereas COVID, the carriers mm -hmm. had to adapt their processes. And so now we can have video call interviews rather than direct face-to-face. -face. We can have facilities whereby up to a certain age and a certain limit, there are no medicals required. So if a, if a client has had a medical in the last 12 months and, you know, very often the wealthy will have their annual MOT, their well man check or well woman check, then we can use that in order to negate having to physically go back to a clinic and do the old treadmill test, so mm. to speak. Mm. So the convenience is, is there for clients. Right. It's not a barrier and, and it can all be very, very seamless. Yeah. And based here in Dubai, you deal with a very international um, client base. Perhaps you could tell me a little bit more about some of the client types, if you like, that you might work with. Okay. Well, basically all nationalities and pretty much all locations. So as an example, recently I've traveled around the GCC, I've been in Asia and I'm due to go to Africa. So the clients are internationally mobile and as a firm, Charles Monarch is internationally mobile. Mm -hmm. And very often we find ourselves collaborating with our other offices. So as an example, if you have somebody with very strong US connections, they might be better off using a, a US CITUS carrier. Mm. Well, I'm not authorized in the US, mm. and so I will in, engage the services of my colleague in Miami, mm. and together we'll work to make sure the client gets the most appropriate advice. Because of the size of the US insurance market, the costs can, can, can be less, is it? Is that essentially? But also from, we... from, from a taxation point yeah. of view as well. And, you know, the Americans are Americans. <laughs> But here, our primary focus is on GCC nationals mm. and those who are internationally mobile and resident in the region. And do you have any clients of the Islamic faith? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, I, I can't obviously give you who they mm. might be, uh, but we do have those in royal families. We have very senior um, locals who are clients of ours. And one of the reasons being is very often they will have assets internationally and, and we both originate from the UK. Mm. So I'll use that as an example. Whereas five years ago, six years ago, they would have put their uh, Mayfair apartment into an offshore company, into an offshore trust. HMRC now have got a complete look through and that asset is subject to UK IHT at 40% above the nil rate band. Mm. Well, you can imagine the 10, 20, 50 million dollar property. That's a hefty IHT bill. Mm. Yeah. I imagine a London, London asset, like you say, is now is, is a key thing for a, a non-resident to look at in terms of how they protect for estate planning, isn't it? So I imagine yeah. queries can come up from across the region just specifically on that angle, but that leads into perhaps a broader conversation, does it, about worldwide assets? Uh, absolutely. You, yeah. you look at things holistically. Yeah. So although the initial inquiry and all of our business comes from referral partners, such as private banks, solicitors mm. and accountants, we then open up the conversation by doing our due diligence and uh, carrying out a, a comprehensive fact find to identify exactly what their profile in this scenario is. If as an example, a key man opportunity arose, then we would be duty bound to mention that. Mm. Yeah. But the initial conversation might be, in this case, inheritance tax liquidity planning, because the inheritance tax has to be paid within six months, and the probate process takes significantly longer generally. Mm. In fact, I was with an Emirati the other day, who's, when his mother passed away, that process, Sharia, 
took 24 months. So you can imagine for two years having liquidity challenges, whereas the insurance route basically pays out within seven to 10 days. And, and what kind of trends are you seeing in product? Is there, is there innovation? What, what does the future kind of look like? What's coming down the track? Sure. Uh, well, uh, the carriers themselves are constantly evolving. Oh, one of the exciting things, and although it's been around for 10 years, over the last four or five years, it's gained an awful lot of traction, and that's the index universal life. Now, it fundamentally uses the old chassis of the fixed income universal life, but rather than distributing the coupon or the fixed income interest each year, it uses that to take out a bull call option on one of the indices or index, yeah, maybe the S&P okay. or the Hang Seng. Yeah. Now, what's really exciting there is each year the formula resets. And what you have is you're able to take advantage of the increases, but with a zero floor, there are no losses. Mm. Now, obviously, equities have gone through a tumultuous time in 2020 and 2022. We're old enough to remember a bit before that as well. And clients take comfort in knowing they can take advantage of the upsides without the negative side. And I use the analogy of climbing a staircase. You take one step forward when the equities go up. When equities go down, you stay where you are. Mm. Next year, equities go up. You take another step forward. They go down, you stay where you are. That's interesting. And one of the aspects of, of universal life that would be interesting to explain a little bit further is, is the premium financing side, so the fact that the full cash doesn't have to be paid out for the initial premium. Perhaps you'd explain a little bit sure. why that's interesting. Sure. Well, it probably explains why the wealthy use these tools for their liquidity purposes, but also to boost the value of their estate. So let me give you an example. Uh, a, a, case that was concluded by myself earlier this year. It was a 65-year-old Muslim gentleman who had $15 million worth of cover and it was a $5 million premium. Okay. Now, I, I've never experienced anybody just writing a check out for $5 million. Mm. Right. In much the same way that you buy a house, typically you would pay a deposit down and you would borrow the rest the balance via a mortgage. Because the contracts have a day one cash surrender value and are highly liquid, banks like lending to these contracts. Mm. So in much the same way that you would buy a house using a mortgage, people buy these contracts using bank finance. Mm. What's really exciting though is the multi-pay version, which rather than paying five million, whether it's upfront or via finance, is to break that, uh, that 5 million premium into 10, 12, 15 segments and pay annually. Mm. Now, you recall earlier on I said about the term assurance, if you miss a payment, uh, the contract lapses. Here, it's far more flexible and adaptable. You can increase, decrease, defer, obviously subject to limits. Yeah. And you can even finance the multi-pay. Mm. So this particular case I mentioned, we flicked it over to multi-pay because the Fed had been increasing interest rates um, and so single pay didn't make sense financially whereas multi-pay smaller chunks bite-sized chunks made it much more manageable for the client and they're covered for the full $15 straight away. Mm -hmm. I mean you mentioned the global interest rates or the Fed rates rising that's the backdrop here yep. so how does that feed through an impact on term and whole of life or cover in general? Okay. Um, a term we tend to see very little demand for because generally speaking it will be long-term insurance. So if you compare a 30-year term with a universal life, the universal life or the whole of life would win hands down if the client lives the full 30 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Because obviously at the end of 30 years with a term assurance there is no cash back. And what we find is that with universal life in particular, because it's a more modern and flexible contract, clients are able to take 5% of the cash surrender value after year or on year 11 onwards, okay? And they can use that income to service the bank financing. So the Emirati I was with yesterday basically went, that's almost like infinity banking. It, it's a self-fulfilling cycle, mm. yeah? 
which is an interesting way of looking at. But it just goes to show that the carriers have, have you know, stepped up to the plate, modified their contracts and have this flexibility built in. Fantastic. Well, look, Andrew, great to talk to you today. We look forward to sharing this interview. I look forward to it. Thank you. The latest technical content delivered through global conversations with professionals for professionals.